Hello, I'm Sam Stovall, Chief Investment Strategist at CFRA Research. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the equity market action prior to the presidential elections. Things I want to focus on today are, first off, the headwinds as well as the tailwinds that are driving the market. Right now, this market is up almost 60% since the March 23rd bottom. Uh, historically, six-month returns are only around 30% going back to 1932. So this advance uh, has actually been the strongest of all bull market advances going back uh, about 90 years. So what are some of the headwinds? Well, not only the seasonality in terms of September, October, but also the potential ramp up in COVID-19 cases. The extreme difference between growth and value, as well as gold prices, interest rates, the value of the dollar, are they pointing to ominous implications? And then lastly, the worry about a democratic sweep of the executive and legislative branches. Obviously the tailwinds we've been having uh, benefit of going back since this market bottom on March 23rd, uh, essentially the large and swift fiscal and monetary stimulus, as well as economists and analysts looking across the valley into 2021 uh, for the GDP growth to be positive next year versus negative this year, as well as looking for earnings growth that's close to 30% for the S&P 500 in 2021 versus the minus 21% anticipated for this year. And then finally, with interest rates as low as they are, investors are likely going to be resurrecting the Fed model, which takes projected 12 month earnings for the S&P 500, divides that by the average investment grade bond yield, and it's indicating a 20% advance for the coming 12 month period. Normally, investment strategists were saying that uh, we're going to likely see an increase in volatility in the second half of this election year. But actually, history tells the opposite, that if you look to the comparative standard deviation or the comparative volatility of prices uh, in election year months, as compared with all non-election year months, we actually find that there is a reduction in volatility in the second half of the year, specifically July, August, September, October, and December. Why is November traditionally more volatile? Possibly because of the surprise that the election might unfold. The biggest concern that I think investors have right now is that we could end up with a trifecta, a triple play, where the Democrats take control of the White House as well as both houses of Congress. Yet, should they really worry? History says not really. Uh, we've had five times since World War II in which there has been a trifecta of the presidency and Congress. And in those five times, yes, the market was down in November more times than not, off about two and a half percent because the market was trying to make head or tails out of this sweep. Yet the market tended to advance in December, rising in all observations, mainly because seasonal optimism kicked in once again. Most important, however, is that the market tended to be higher in the subsequent calendar year, rising in four of five times and gaining close to 10 and a half percent. So should we end up with a trifecta? Well, we've had multiple political scenarios going back to World War II, a unified government, meaning that the presidency and both houses of Congress are the same, next being a unified Congress where both houses of Congress are of one party, president of another party, and then a split Congress. During all years, the market gained 8.7% on average and was higher seven of 10 times. Yet should we end up with a trifecta, uh, the average gain was 9.8%. So uh, a little more than 100 basis points better than the average for all years. We've had this kind of an occurrence fairly frequently, 22 years out of 76 years. And the FOA, frequency of advance, or the batting average, was actually the best of all political scenarios. 
So if you want to find out what might happen to the presidency, take a look at the market itself. From July 31 through October 31, if the market goes down, it implies that the incumbent will likely be unseated. That happened um, every time but one going back to World War II back in 1956. I don't think anybody really thought Eisenhower was going to lose to Stevenson, but because of exogenous events, the Suez crisis combined with the Hungarian uprising uh, likely caused the market to tank ahead of our presidential election. So take a look at the market action to see whether we uh, are likely to be pointed to a replacement or a re-election. In terms of sector performances, we've had seven elections going back to the early 1990s, which is as far back as S&P has sector level data. And the most consistent outperformers have been energy and financials leading the market in six of seven observations, followed by healthcare and industrials outperforming five of seven times. No guarantee that that's gonna happen this time, I think you really have to focus more on what are the prevailing issues for the upcoming election. What we have seen so far uh, since July 31 is a pretty positive performance for the market. Uh, styles as well as sizes have all been positive and 73% of the sectors have also been in the black. In terms of sub-industries, there are 147 of them in the S&P 500, 82% are in positive territory. So again, the implication is that either the market is focusing exclusively on recovering from this coronavirus, or maybe it is not truly worried about changing horses in midstream and that we could end up seeing a Republican re-election. So the thoughts are, we just recently hit a new all-time high for the S&P 500 following the uh, bear market that shaved 34% off of the value of the S&P. And what history tells us is we've got a ways to go before we fall into a new bear market. On average, bull markets last an average of 37 months. Uh, however, like the messenger from Marathon, they do tend to collapse from exhaustion an average of about two and a half months after hitting a post bear new high. And they have fallen anywhere from five to 14%, averaging about 8%. Interesting that if the new bear high was established on August 18th, add two and a half months to that, and we're coming up with the election date itself. What could cause a sell off? Well, if we do have a triple play election come true, investors might decide to sell out and take profits from their very strong gains, particularly in the cyclical and growth areas, because the tax rate has been indicated by the Democrats that it would likely double in the new administration should they be able to push it through Congress. So instead of paying 21% on capital gains, a potential tax rate could be closer to 43% uh, with the additional investment penalty. So investors could decide to take their profits now rather than wait into the new year. Also right now we are looking at a growth to value vertigo as I call it, uh, indicating that the performance of the S&P growth index has uh, significantly outperformed that of the value index which implies uh, that it is vulnerable to a market sell-off. So what are the election outcome scenarios? The democratic sweep, the triple play that I've been talking about. Possibly the second is a democratic presidential victory, but the Republican Senate stays. That would help to block some of the um, policies that could be pushed forward by a new administration. And then lastly, the re-election of the status quo. So which sectors are likely to be the better performers under a possible democratic victory scenario? Well, we're gonna save the best for last. Please tune in to future webinars where we will talk to Garrett Nelson, who covers the consumer discretionary sector, who's gonna discuss echo-driven trends looking at uh, electric vehicle plays in general, Tesla in particular, as well as those industries that could be helped by an eco-friendly policy. 
Then we will be talking with an industrials analyst, Elizabeth Vermillion, who will be discussing infrastructure spending possibilities, what impact there could be on the electrical grid, roads and bridges, commuter rail, as well as miscellaneous transportation. So with that, thank you very much for listening. Uh, let's monitor the market to see where it says we might end up with the upcoming election, but please tune in to our analysts who will discuss in more detail the likely beneficiaries of a possible democratic victory.